Hello, my name is Kelly and I'm the Mathematic Plumber. And today we're going to continue on with video 3 of the Rainwater Leader series. Today we are talking about Rainwater Leader offsets and draining sumps into storm building drains. All code references will be made from the National Plumbing Code of Canada and I'm presently using the 2015 edition. Now if we look at this picture right here, what we're going to notice is we have an offset. An offset just underneath the roof here. And you would think, does that affect the system? Well, according to the code it does. Let's look at 2495 offsets in liters. Number one, no change in the size of liter with a nominally horizontal offset is required if the offset is located immediately under the roof, is not more than six meters long, and has a slope of not less than 1 in 50. Number two, if the horizontal offset is more than six meters long, the leader shall conform to table 2,419, which is the same table for sizing storm building drains. Now our offset here is at 6.2 meters. It is more than six meters long, and it is also sloping at 1 in 100. So we need to size this section here as a storm building drain. So if you've watched the previous three videos, you're going to recognize this building. I don't have the dimensions on the roof anymore. It is a 15 meter by 30 meter roof. And it has a liter load of 12,600 liters of rainfall that are going to go through the roof drain. Well, that first little bit of rainwater liter before it gets to the offset can still be 5 inches in size. We can tell that by looking at table 2, 4, 10, 11. And going across at 19,500, it says, hey, we can be 5 inch. But as soon as we get to that offset, though, we need to change the table 2, 4, 10, 9. But now we're at 1 and 100, so let's go look down this. I have 12,400 at 6 inch. Well, I got 12,600. That's not quite enough. So if I go down to the next one in the 1 and 100 slope, I'm down to 8 inches now. See how that changed everything just by changing the slope? And of course then, everything following that offset will be 8 inches, including the next section of rainwater later. You would never want to reduce that in size that goes directly against plumbing code. Well, let's talk about sumps. Here's a picture of a sump installed in someone's basement. The weeping tile is connected up to the sump pit. So any rain that comes down beside the building can flow into the sump pit and then be pumped out by the sump pump. Now right now they just have it discharging on the ground, which is perfectly acceptable in many areas. But for today's example, we want to turn that discharge pipe around and pipe it straight into the storm building drain. Let's talk about how to do that. Now in order to size up a sump in relationship to a storm drainage system, we need to know how many liters per second will flow through the pump. Now this is kind of a weird number because in North America we don't use liters per second for sumps. It's generally rated in US gallons per hour. So we're going to have to do some conversions on that. Now in the classroom those conversions are important as we will actually do those calculations to figure out what we're going to do. In the field, you can probably get away with just using a conversion calculator that you'll find on Google. Now, before we can do any conversions, we need to look at a plumbing code to help define what we need to do. 2,410,3, -2 part two. Where a fixture or equipment that produces a continuous or semi-continuous flow drains into a combined sewer or storm sewer, the hydraulic load from the fixture is 900 liters for each liter per second of flow. Simply put, a fixture that produces a continuous or semi-continuous flow is a sump. Now simply put, we need to find out how many liters per second will flow through the sump so we can multiply that number by 900. That will tell us how many liters we will dump into our storm building drain or, according to this clause, a combined building sewer. The combined building sewer or combined building drain will come up in the next video. Well, let's have a look at this building. This should look familiar from the previous videos. I have a simple flat roof building with 12,600 liters coming down the rainwater liter. Turns the corner, becomes the storm building drain. However, we have a sump pump there. In this example, we're going to keep things really simple. That sump pump is rated at 9 liters per second. 
So what we need to do is calculate the number of liters that are going to be dumped into the storm building drain on top of the 12,600. So I need to take 9 liters per second times 900. And that equals 8,100 liters that the sump pump is going to be dumping into the storm building drain. So 12,600 liters plus 8,100 liters equals 20,700 liters. Now if I look in table 24109, I go down the 1 and 50 column until I get to 37,800 liters. I go across, I need to be 8 inches now. Now for my last example, I have a sump pump that's rated in imperial gallons per minute. Now I recognize this is not actually a thing, but for the purposes of class, this is what you might see on a quiz, and we're going to have to do a conversion. In order to find the conversion factor, we need to go to the very back of the National Plumbing Code of Canada, and we're going to see a conversion factors page. So if we look in the bottom two thirds of this table, we're going to see that we can convert liters per second to imperial gallons per minute. It's not labeled as that, but that is imperial gallons per minute. And all we need to do is take the liters per second and multiply it by 13.2. However, we have imperial gallons per minute already, so we need to take our imperial gallons per minute and divide it by 13.2. And 35 imperial gallons per minute divided by 13.2 gives me 2.65 liters per second. Now I'm going to take that 2.65 and multiply it by 900, and I'm going to get 2,386.36 liters dumping into my storm building drain. Well, finally, to size up that storm building drain that has both the rainwater leader and the sump draining into it, I'm going to have to add those two numbers together. So I got 12,600 liters plus 2,386 liters equals 14,986 liters dumping into the storm building drain graded at 1 and 100. Back into table 24109. Down the column, that is 1 and 100. And I need to go all the way up to 26,700, which is also 8 inch. Well, this brings us to the end of video 4 of the Rainwater Leader series. Stay tuned for the next video, which will be combined building sewers and combined building drains. Until then, have a good day.